Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. So we are recording in your voice okay. and your slides. Okay. And this video will go up onto the website today sometime. And so you're going to ask this question. <coughs> if you need to go to that mic or to oh. shout it out, you can just say the question over Sure. Do you want to do it? Up to you. <laughs> yeah, it's on already. Yeah, it's, it's on. Just, you can even take it off and pass it around. Okay, we'll begin in night two. Begin in this. Begin the yeah.
Okay, let's go. Ready? So, um, welcome to uh, this uh, Drupal.org conversation <laughs> because, uh, yeah, it's a session, but uh, we can um, can converse and uh, discuss about the things that uh, I will present and we will present with Gabor. So, um, my name is Seb Gorman. Um, I will be assisted by Gabor, which is uh, the master of localization. <laughs> Um, first of all, uh, this session is about localization, also known as L10N. Um, don't be mistaken for internal internationalization, aka I18. Um, this this um, this session will be about uh, translating the interface of Drupal and its module, and we will present the current infrastructure and process process of um, translating where we are um, about the Drupal 8 support and how to make uh, the work of translators easier and more recognized. So if you want to know about uh, inter internationalization, there will be a multilingual session with Gabor also and VJ, and that will happen at 14 um, today, room uh, 117. Okay, so localization, how does it work? Um, the, it all started with the T function. This, uh, this T function is uh, in Drupal since uh, for a long time. Um, it can accept um, uh, variables and contexts, and this T function is uh, extracted. The strings used in T function are extracted from Drupal, and its modules using Podix module, and uh, they are um, extracting, uh, extracted uh, by the site. Uh, localized at Drupal.org. So um, these pure source files uh, can be translated uh, for many by many languages and uh, by uh, translation groups on uh, localized and also on originally on the POA edit, which is a desktop app, or maybe on other sites like uh, localized.biz, which is an online tool and it's really nice. The interface is really nice. Maybe I'll demo it. And once uh, translated, it can be imported back in Drupal. So these strings are uh, in your installation in the two tables, uh, local sources and local targets. Um, and uh, another option is, of course, to use the localization client module to directly edit the translation on your site. So. Uh, these are apps to translate, but we are a community, so we have localized.drupal.org, and the talk, this talk will be uh, most about this site. Um, this site is a combination of a few modules. Um, there is the Potix module that extracts the strings from the release of Drupal.org. They are automatically imported. And um, it offers a tool far more performant that de than uh, desktop apps, uh, like uh, cross-release translation, so we have uh, pollination uh, between uh, project and releases. Uh, we have multiple groups uh, for translating multiple languages. Uh, this group, in this group, we have roles, uh, and there are reviewers, contributors, and admins. Uh, and then uh, we can automate. From that, we can uh, build a search process that uh, automatically updates uh, Drupal translation and uh, contrib inside your site. And it is now in Drupal 8 core, thanks to Gabor and uh, his uh, fellow, uh, fellow core, core contribs. So I'm going to present you the process, uh, the whole process with the module used in localized.drupal.org. Uh, how many of you know how uh, the inside of the sites localized.drupal.org. Okay, a few of you. Um, the whole process begins with Drupal.org. Um, from, the, from there, we, uh, we pick up a release.tsv, so it's a large, uh, it's like uh, four megabytes of uh, all the releases that are on Drupal.org for all the projects. We pass it, and we, we take the latest uh, releases uh, through the localization server connector, which is a REST connector. And from that, we keep the files, and we analyze them with Podix module. 
So polyct is used to extract the strings. And so the strings are um, stored in the in a huge database that is localized at Drupal.org. And then through the um, localization community modules and localization groups, which is relying on OG, the community can translate uh, all the strings. So the community can translate all those strings through the interface. The interface is provided by a localization community. So when you go onto the localized.org site, you can see an interface with a lot of, um, of rows for each string. And this is the localization community module that uh, provides this interface. And then you have multiple uh, ways to submit translation. You have localization remotes that is part of L localize, um, and then it communicates with uh, the few L localization clients uh, that you can put on your site. So you are both translating your site and then submitting the, um, the translation to the localized server. So you give to the community without even knowing it. So it's really nice. And then once it gets submitted, the reviewers of your group, your translation group, can um, can review your uh, your suggestions, and then we have a localization packager that uh, extract uh, for each language uh, the PO files and uh, make it makes it available on the ftp.drupal.org, uh, and then from then you have the localization update module or Drupal 8 core that can that can fetch these uh, translations back to your site. Okay, so this this is the whole process of um, localizing. Any questions on this one? Was it clear? Okay, if it's clear, I think we will make it. Uh, we we'll put the the schema on um, localize <laughs> because uh, every every now and then uh, somebody asks uh, how does it work, and there there are like products, a localization server, localization clients. Localization a bit on our Drupal 8. It's four modules just for just for translating. So, okay. And um, the great news is that uh, in August, uh, localized Drupal.org that was on Drupal <coughs> 6 for longer. So it was created in uh, Drupal 6, I think. Yeah. Yep. So um, the issue for porting uh, localized Drupal.org was created uh, far long ago. Uh, and then sex, thanks a lot uh, to um, these people. Uh, many thanks to them. It is now D7 powered. So we can now uh, accept uh, feature requests and, um, and work on these features. And of course, the second great news is Drupal 8 Core now ships with automatic downloads of core and control modules, even during install. And this will hopefully um, attract more uh, international users of Drupal. Okay, now some, num some numbers, scary numbers. Um, so you may not know that, but uh, Localize is uh, one of the biggest sites in terms of data um, because uh, we are handling a lot of string, a lot of projects, and um, for, for example, we have a 112 translation group uh, 6,000 contributors and counting, uh, 1 million translation recorded, so they are kept back in the in the database as of now. And of course, there are a lot of work to do uh, as of translations, like uh, reviewing suggestions and uh, and so on. So for the developer, uh, well, we have a huge database um, the, that is six gigabytes, and about half of uh, this, um, this, uh, data, this database is, um, is uh, localization related. So, um, so for example, we have eight million lines uh, just to, fa to match the file that, uh, where the T function was, um, was analyzed, the line. The type, I think it's uh, suggestion or translation. Yeah. And the project and the release. So, just these, uh, these columns are making um, 8 uh, million rows. 
Um, okay, so from that, uh, our current status for the whole suite, suite is um, as is. So Podix module, um, the Drupal 8 compatibility, that is the, the capacity of extracting strings from Drupal 8 is nearly done. There are three issues remaining, uh, maybe a few now, because uh, yesterday we were um, sprinting on this. Uh, two of them are criticals. Um, that means uh, strings won't get extracted uh, if they are not uh, resolved. Some strings won't get extracted. Um, so the first one is support for Drupal 8 shipped configuration translatable. So we have um, a few um, issues with the country module that are uh, depending on the on other configuration dependencies and then external dependencies. And then we have uh, recently uh, renamed the translation wrapper class to translatable th strings, string, and the issue is quite resolved, I think. Well, yeah, that I actually got committed this morning. Nice. Not nice. not by me, by Harem. So. Oh, cool, cool. And then a minor one on the um, format of YAML uh, translation patterns. So we are pretty good on products. Uh, the next. Uh, I think the next thing, thing will be to port the Potex module so that Drupal 8 um, sites can extract themselves. <laughs> can yeah, so right now the problem is if you want to look at your, if you want to check your source code, if all the things you think are translatable are actually translatable on your Drupal 8 site, you now need to have a Drupal 7 Drush installed so you can actually run POTX on your Drupal 8 code, which is not very convenient. Um, especially since POTX is pretty version independent, so we could make it work with uh, Drupal 8, but we need to port some stuff uh, to Drupal 8 so you can use POTX to verify that your code is ready for translation in Drupal 8. Okay, so now for the localization update part, uh, it's all good. We, are now, uh, we have now the capacity to update translation in Drupal 8 core. Um, so meanwhile, the interface of Drupal 8 core has been backported to a new Drupal 7.2 branch. And that's it. As for localization client, uh, we, we don't have um, a version for Drupal 8 yet. We have uh, a new proof of concept uh, made by Gabor and, sorry. And Kevin O'Leary. Okay. Kevin O'Leary. Okay, so it's based on the, the tour module. I'm going to show you a, a quick demo. Uh, the main issues of this proof of concept are uh, it's far off in terms of D, D, D8 API. I managed to um, to install it on the, on the last beta 15, but um, uh, maybe uh, some DX uh, DX things have changed. Yeah. So the so the idea with with the concept is people always wanted to do in place translation of things on the page, but Drupal outputs things at all kinds of places on the page that you cannot really in place edit. So the idea with this proof of concept is to use something like the tour module to point to places where you have things that you can translate and then you can in place translate them there. And then the rest of the things that may contain dynamic information that we cannot find on the page could be shown at the end in a summary. And then you can translate the rest at the end of the process. So you can kind of get an in-place translation experience on the page. It's not very scalable if you start off fresh translating a page because then like you have hundreds of str strings on the page and an input field jumping around on the page that you need to follow. But Considering that the community should translate to several languages, this is useful to touch up on things that are not yet done and uh, using the remote submission functionality contribute to the community as well. Yeah. So about that, um, for example, strings that are, uh, have variables in them uh, can't be translated, but you, we have um, kind of a, win a fallback window for that, that, uh, that is new too. Um, and of course, it doesn't send or save uh, anything actually right now. So <laughs> it's a bit of a, of a shame, but it's a good proof of, of concept. And here is a demo. So um, 
I've installed only uh, localization clients, um, enabled one long, one long wage, and then you have a little button at the far top right on the, on the nav bar. And as you can see, the tour module is, uh, is displaying some pop-ups, so some of them are, are, are a bit uh, far outside the, the page. And it should, uh, it should replace the text that, uh, that you are typing. And then if you don't see uh, some um, translation, you have this fallback window uh, that at the end. Yeah. At the end yeah. So that's cool. And you have um, a little percentage thing uh, that we, we don't have uh, in Drupal 7. OK. Um, so that's so that's an idea. This this is a video of actual code running on Drupal 8, but it doesn't actually save anything, or it doesn't actually send it to the localization <laughs> server. So this is a proof of concept that we started as a hackathon project, and then then it's it's at the uh, waiting for someone to help uh, finish it up state. Yeah. That's really cool. So the question was, is it possible to translate something by clicking on it if it was untranslated? Uh, with this proof of concept, no. But I think it, like the tour module adds uh, enough uh, metadata on the elements that we could write some JavaScript to figure out if you clicked on something, if there's an element in that area of the DOM that has the metadata and show the field. I think it's possible to do, yeah. We need someone to help get this uh, move forward. We can talk to Wim Lears, yeah, if he has the time. <laughs> He's like triple or, or quadruple booked or something, I don't know, on all kinds of things. Another question? Okay. Um, uh, next up is uh, the main part, um, localization server that is uh, powering uh, Localize. So now we have the Drupal 6 branch that is now discontinued, uh, because, well, except for security re releases and backports. But um, it has a lot of uh, interesting remaining issues uh, regarding uh, usability and, and a whole lot of uh, feature requests that we can port to now to uh, Drupal 7. Uh, which is now powering uh, localized.drupal.org. So I'm going to review uh, some of them um, because uh, there, there are some ideas that are really nice and uh, maybe at the end of, of the talk uh, I will um, ask for a show of hands of um, the main ideas that you want uh, to be put uh, first. Okay, so... Um, on the Drupal site side, it's getting better with the localization updates and so on in Drupal 8 core. But um, now we fa we are facing a more uh, more problematic um, uh, sorry um, situation. Um, the localization community won't get uh, the the recognition uh, because uh, people that will use uh, Drupal 8 uh, sites will just have a Drupal site that is localized and that just works. So we may need to, um, to provide some gamification and statistics and badges for the community that is on localized and may, maybe um, um, feature some links to the localized sites during install and something like that uh, to, to keep uh, people um, coming to localize. Uh, the infrastructure uh, is uh, handling more and more strings uh, because we we regular regularly had languages. Uh, we have more releases, more projects, and so on. Uh, so first, we need to archive some old data that is Drupal 5. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I think, uh, thousands of uh, releases in Drupal 5. And this will hopefully improve uh, search performance and performance overall. Uh, next up is a translation interface that needs a revamp. Uh, right now it's uh, very 
2006 or seven ish yeah. <laughs> so we may need to, to think about uh, the, um, the UX of uh, the translation interface um, so why not translate uh, ex not exclusively but uh, most of the time in uh, localization clients or maybe in a whole other interface uh, through REST AP APIs uh, that's IDs <laughs> Um, the community aspect uh, needs a push uh, because uh, even in, uh, in the groups that, that are more, more and more active, we have um, a loss of uh, momentum uh, due to uh, now we, are, we have lost um, notifications uh, through mail, uh, but we need to get it back maybe, or maybe have uh, activity streams like uh, who translated what in the, in the yesterday or something like that. Uh, maybe more discussion about the strings uh, themselves, um, like glossary handling, um, and maybe a report back to the maintainer of a module uh, that the string is not uh, really uh, easy to translate, um, some, something like that. So we will discuss uh, the, these problems um, through, uh, through examples and uh, ideas that I've picked up from the um, localized, well, uh, localization server issue queue. Uh, first, uh, I, will, uh, I will. I would like to um, show you um, Transifex. How, how many of, of you uh, know Transifex? Okay. For the for the record, is uh, it's a um, it's a site, an old external site that is uh, proprietary, but uh, a lot of uh, open source projects uh, are um, using it. Uh, for example, uh, VLC, uh, Django, um, Own Cloud. Um, and it's free for open source projects. So I'm going to demo it a bit quickly. Just uh, the image is, uh, is uh, blurry, so it's not uh, nice. Um, the interface is that simple. Uh, it's fast visual search. Um, and uh, the, the suggestion and history and glossary handling are really, really nice. And uh, it's uh, really um, string centric. Uh, and we have uh, mass review, search and replace. Uh, and of course, activity streams, announcements, uh, statistics, and so on. So, um, yeah, I'm going to demo the interface. So, um, I'm not seeing your screen. Oh, yeah. My ring. What's your background? Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, it's free for open source uh, projects. And uh, you can have as many languages as you like. Um, you have some statistics on the on the front page of a project. Uh, basically, we have that. But what's interesting, the translation uh, interface. So you import um, you import some POT files that are templates of um, source strings. And then we uh, we you have a list on the on the left that you can bulk check and review or in review. You have even ma machine translate through uh, Google search, uh, Google Translate Engine or Microsoft, but it's paid uh, services. You have bulk find and replace, that is really nice. And some tag handling. So then when you, uh, when you click on only one string, as I said, it's very string-centric, so we, you have um, the untranslated, untranslated string, uh, which on it you can add um, instructions about the strings, like uh, don't, don't touch this, uh, this is uh, frozen, for example. Um, you can add your, uh, your own suggestion and save it. And then you have a bunch of tabs that add details about the string. So you have the, um, the occurrence of the strings, in the in the files of your project, and you have all the suggestions that everyone has made, uh, none yet. History about the strings, um, and uh, a little of uh, this little thing is really nice. The glossary. I will talk about this uh, later. And commands. Okay. So, this is a quick demo. Um, So we, well, we could ask the question of porting it to um, porting the whole thing to Transifex, um, but 
it has APIs and so on, but uh, the work that we, we've put to, uh, to make uh, Drup uh, Localize and Drupal.org work together, uh, it's, it, it would be a bit of a shame to, uh, to, to not have uh, everything in one place and one place that we know we can unhold, handle. Uh, and then maybe later add badges in, on Drupal.org for translators and so on. Um, so I, I'll, I'll uh, report the question to, to the end of the session uh, about that. So we just, um, we just saw a glossary section on transifects. Actually, um, I am part of the French community and we have a French site. It's a whole external site that I met. And Hi, and uh, a colleague of mine manage. Um, uh, so it's uh, an external Drupal 7 site. We have uh, a content type that is a uh, glossary term. So as, of, um, as in localize, we have a source, uh, source uh, string, sorry, uh, which is legacy for, uh, for on this example. And then anyone can uh, put uh, its its suggestion, and uh, everyone can vote on this suggestion. And then it gets extracted to a JSON file. We have, uh, we have some, uh, some browser extensions that, um, that are available. Uh, in here, sorry. So this is the site, and we have uh, browser extensions for um, uh, Firefox, Safari, and uh, Chrome. So we have like uh, 400 uh, strings, I think, and some of them have a status of um, have a status to be reviewed, and some of them are frozen. So every every time someone comes and wants to translate, we show them that uh, there is a, a glossary to follow, and this is really nice for the um, translation French translation sprints. Um, so this is really nice, and we would like to put it in the, directly in localize. Also, I would like to uh, to point out that uh, the, the interface of localize is uh, much uh, better to translate with uh, these little um, little highlights. So these are available directly on localize and on your localization client module in your site. Uh, so that's so that's your browser extensions uh, integrating the terminology information from the JSON that was exported from the French site. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we could put it in on localize, uh, but we would lose uh, the capacity of uh, of having uh, your glossary on the localization client module. So maybe the browser extension uh, should be kept. Okay. So now about performance, oh, is there any question about that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so obviously you have uh, the proof for the side or some administrators who decide that maybe uh, they are in their uniform because a bad translation is worse than no translation, so. Yeah, absolutely. The question was, um, well, is there, uh, was it uh, some question? But yeah, the, um, we, we could add some rules, um, well, some pr permission about that in the translation group, uh, group teams to, um, to freeze uh, this glossary, and then, um, and then everyone would be uh, having good translation. Okay, so now to performance. So we, the, the third thing, that we absolutely need, need to do right now. We have Drupal 8 uh, that is coming. Uh, Drupal 5 is, uh, is really far, so <laughs> we should uh, archive strings, and that should uh, give us some space. Um, of course, uh, only the strings would be archived. The um, translation files uh, would be kept on ftp.drupal.org. Um, what we could do then is um, improve the interface uh, and performance interface by doing more AJAX requests. Because right now, if you select uh, the filter of uh, 50 strings, you get 50 rows of uh, translations, uh, source, source strings, and, and their suggestions. And it's really uh, 
uh, really slow. So we could add um, some kind of um, per string uh, loading and saving by Ajaxi. Uh, then we have some uh, SQL, SQL request made uh, for statistics that are really, really uh, slow. So maybe uh, if someone uh, that has good SQL um, uh, skill can come by and, uh, and help us. Uh, another idea is to index strings in other, another, um, another server, uh, solar server or Elasticsearch server uh, for um, full text uh, search and also for statistics. It would be a lot uh, faster and anyone can add uh, its ID. So remember it's a discussion, so don't hesitate to bring, uh, bring up your ideas. Um, about the UX improvements, uh, we have a few, uh, few ideas about that. Uh, the, the main thing that, um, that I get when, uh, when people are translating uh, French um, is that uh, we should focus only on the stable releases. Uh, in your search, in the search bar, you have uh, automatically, um, we should have automatically the latest stable release um, selected, for example, so that people focus on the, on the, re, uh, on the strings that matters. Um, another idea is to, to get um, search, uh, for, for example, uh, reviewers uh, would like to uh, to have automatically the reviewing filter on. Uh, that would be great to to review fast, faster the the strings of uh, one project, for example. Uh, so we have this idea of visual shots, which is um, a little uh, JavaScript plugin that uh, even transifects transifects as, and I didn't know that, but I proposed uh, this uh, this one. And it's the same one. So uh, there is an issue about that, and I think it's Drupal seven. Yeah, it's Drupal seven. So it, it should be uh, it should be tested a bit more before before get, getting into localized. But um, I think it's a nice idea, and it's a nice beginning for improving UX. And of course, of course, we have many other ideas like uh, statistics on community activity, uh, improved newcomer experience by using uh, the backport of, uh, or even the, the backport of the tour module or even uh, Joyride uh, to, um, to welcome the, the new uh, translator. Um, of course, comments on the suggestion and translations would be uh, a big plus. Uh, translation memory, which is uh, auto suggestions from uh, other strings, uh, it's known as fuzzy matching. When you when you have translated, for example, uh, one orange uh, to uh, une orange en français, you have fuzzy match with two oranges, uh, and uh, it would be uh, faster for for translators. Uh, we have, uh, I don't think we have the same um, spam uh, prevention than on Drupal.org and uh, it's, getting, it's getting a bit hard to, to fight spam, so we could ask uh, the DA to, to help us about that. Um, REST support was, would, be, uh, would be nice for fighting source strings in external apps, um, for example. Um, and then we have uh, some uh, some other problems like uh, language inheritance. <laughs> some language, some um, uh, local language would like to uh, to to inherit translation string from the, their main languages, like uh, English uh, from UK and English from US. Um, we have uh, we could have staging imports uh, and bulk review uh, in localize. We could have a localized.drupal.org that is localized, so you, you could translate in your own language. And then markdown for wiki pages and so on. So it would be good. I have a few, um, uh, few RTL languages that, uh, that are complaining about uh, the support of uh, RTL languages too. Okay, thanks. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, our respective company, Acquia for Gabor and Machina Corpus for, um, for, my, for me. Um, any questions or reactions about that?
feel free to, to use the mic. Um, if you don't, uh, let, uh, let's sprint a uh, whole, uh, whole week on that, uh, especially on Friday. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, use it. One question regarding uh, TransFX. So the idea is to have similar kind of features in localized Drupal or, or actually use TransFX because it's proprietary software? Yeah, no, uh, the, the thing is we would like to put uh, some features okay. of TransFX into localized the Drupal. Okay. Actually, we, we are only missing, like, they have good statistic, statistics and activity feeds yeah. and commands on strings and glossary, of course. But glossary, I think it would be really fast to integrate. Uh, so we are we have uh, like uh, uh, seventy or eighty percent of trans effects available. So it's really nice. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go into the mic and ask. Yeah. So you mentioned a whole slew of issues. Uh, what would you say the top three are? What, what, what in terms of priority? Which things? Would you like to focus on? Okay, the top priority is to archive uh, old strings, and then uh, we have some work uh, that is done, like uh, the the visual search interface uh, is done. Uh, it's uh, the patch is ready. You uh, just have to test it. So, the the thing to test on localize is that you have to have uh, um, Drupal.org development sites to test on, because uh, you have to have uh, real data. And um, and uh, this is this is not done easily to 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 work on your local uh, development server, so we prefer to to work on Drupal.org servers. Um, but it's really to test. So we have archiving Drupal five strings. We have uh, visual search, and maybe the glossary would need to uh, to pick up the ID. Maybe make it a feature. And then um, ID, adding for some permissions, and the idea there, we just have to put it on on the code. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, for performance, I think there's probably some qu uh, quicker wins with uh, uh, adding indexes to uh, database tables and SQL type stuff. Uh, so. Uh, that's I'd actually put that ahead of um, archiving, which I imagine archiving would be a little bit harder of a task. But yeah, both are definitely uh, good ideas. Yeah, we, we already have some indexes, but uh, yeah, we should uh, we should take every request made by the localization server module and explain, put it in the explain uh, my school. Um, yeah, definitely we could add some index, especially for statistics that are that are run on cron runs and maybe take an hour to, to refresh or something like that. For for some um, I think the, the, the main page, the front page is doing a, is a, is taking this time to, to process. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. a lot of a uh, lot of opportunity there, but we need someone with some time and some expertise. And I guess so. You recognize some some of that already in issues. Uh, just we, one, just one so far, but uh, which I, I'm I, sure there's more. I think you found through database logs or something, or how you recognize those issues. Yeah, in general, I for that one I just. Uh, got a query of the process list while I was waiting mm -hmm. for the home page to load. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, we could use better tooling for, uh, like, the Procona slow log monitor. Uh, you could probably install that in your home directory on the dev server and use nice. that. Mm -hmm. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, we should talk about that more. Uh, so I have a question about from a perspective of reviewers. So how much statistics can we actually get out right now? Because I have no idea when the translations come in. We have so data. I, we have data about everything. Right. We but don't, it's not available. Yes. We don't output the data because of our performance concerns. So we have data about like the smallest detail of everything. So when somebody submits a suggestion, we track when did when was it submitted, who submitted it, which tool they used to submit it, so we can tell if it was coming from localization client or the site or something. Uh, we track when it was approved, by whom it was approved, 
if it was uh, rejected, who rejected it, when it was rejected, if it was approved again, or if somebody submitted the same thing again, who was that person. So we have a lot of data on everything, which is part of the reason we have that huge database, because we keep all that log information for each of the half a million strings, uh, and uh, times the 112 translations. Um, so we have all that data, we need to figure out how to make that available, we need to figure out what kind of data to people would like to see. So the idea of the, uh, that Sebastian explained about activity feeds is yes, now when people submit, like if somebody translates views in your language, you have no idea they did it because you have no visibility to the exactly. data. So some teams worked around that by submitting a post, hey, I just submitted the views translation, please someone look at it. It's not very nice that you need to manually do that. So we, I think we should have activity feeds to expose that kind of information. And we actually had an, a Google Summer of Code student try to do that two years ago, but he failed to find enough time in the summer to complete it. He would have been entirely capable technically, but not capable in terms of time. So um, for, we had a chance there, but unfortunately we haven't, haven't been able to get a uh, result from there. But so, it's a very good idea that we should explore. So we have an issue somewhere. We have an issue somewhere. <laughs> That's a short answer. Yes, okay. it's not a very yes. comforting answer, but yes. Um, what could help we, would be, uh, what would you want to, to have displayed in terms of statistics? Uh, as, as for me, I think that uh, we should be focusing on the latest release, so we should um, we, su we should uh, swap out the older releases that are in anterior to this one, to the stable one. So if you have any ideas of uh, how would you like to, to, to see data, just post on the, on the issue. It would be really nice. Okay, thank you. So first of all, um, thank you for caring about these boring things because you rarely get probably a, le a lot of thanks. Uh, but one practical question, so obviously you have quite a bit of legacy and history with this, uh, so I guess all of this is uh, done using your own code and not Symphony components or something because it's okay. probably hard to switch. Uh, but have you considered, because at least in 2.7 there's a translator profiler or something like that, have you considered for some parts looking from some shared bits and pieces or is, the, is it just maybe so different? Yeah, so in Drupal 8, we use a lot of uh, Symfony components, and one of our one of uh, our members in the multilingual team started working on integrating the Symfony translator component, uh, Clemens Tolboom, in fact, and he found that there's there were at the time that was I think a year and a half ago or two years ago there was a lot of missing features in Symfony that we already have in core, uh, particularly con string context support for providing metadata in the code about your string. And he started writing code for, no, he started porting the Drupal code to Symfony so that they have that feature that we need to have so that Sym so everybody is happy in Symfony and have the feature. But turns out you cannot port a feature from Drupal because Drupal's GPL and Symfony, the license is not compatible, so you cannot just copy over the code. You need to rewrite the code entirely for Symfony so it's not copied over from Drupal's GPL code. So license was not compatible, and he spent a lot of time trying to convince people there to uh, that they need that feature. Um, and he ran out of time, and he didn't have time to rewrite it from the ground up so it's license compatible. So I think that was the biggest roadblock, but we have a lot of history in trying to integrate that, but then failing due to technicalities. So we keep using our own uh, translation code in Drupal 8 for mainly that reason. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry for that. What's the symphony license? Hmm? What's the symphony license? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I yeah. First of all, thanks for doing a great job of these uh, things. Really impressive stuff. So I'm uh, looking forward to uh, things coming there. Um, uh, my question uh, was really um, just about what you mentioned there, the, um, the contextual stuff. Um, uh, my feeling is that um, uh, many people uh, try to uh, uh, translate strings that have uh, different meanings in, uh, in different languages. Uh, stuff like the word post, 
to post and upost. Um, and um, the people that, uh, well, at least from our experience, are working with uh, doing translations and stuff like that, they're not really the, the techie, codey people. So um, the problem um, to, like, say, hey, this string needs context, uh, that information, like, never gets out there, I feel. So could you just um, say a bit about uh, how we, how how are your thoughts regarding doing that process easier? Um, uh, is there anything we could do to like let everyone say, yeah, in an easier way? Well, this means two things. This is one of the things that uh, keep us from porting to Transifex is because we can we can like add a button, and that will uh, um, hopefully uh, maybe create an issue on Drupal.org directly on the project that. On the projects that are using this string, this um, not uh, that are that have no context or not enough context, so we could add a button about this. This this would be uh, really fast. The main question is uh, would be automatic posting or just creating a new tab, and you would do uh, you would add your comment about this string needs that context for it to be translated. But yeah, it will, it it's one of the uh, of the issues that uh, that is in uh, in localization server project. So yeah, it's one of the things that uh, we would like to add. Yeah, I think I think in, in terms of like um, uh, getting the community uh, like engaged in the translation and like giving great feedback, I think that's uh, a great way to uh, like put in some effort, like uh, making it easier for non take you guys to just say yeah and uh, yeah we need we need platform support for that because in transifex you can say this this string means this and you can explain it in the description but in drupal what drupal is going to look at is the source string and the context and that localized drupal.org somebody wrote some message somewhere it doesn't care about that so if you use the same string for multiple meanings, um, then we need the developer to add the context. And the way we can get the developer is we have a button on localized Drupal.org and we have single sign-on on Drupal.org so we can get you, uh, you, you can then submit an issue on Drupal.org or submit one for you because we know your user on Drupal.org so we can get that uh, done there. Um, but we need it to get back to the code somehow sooner or later from the developer because otherwise the Drupal itself will not recognize that as a context. Yeah, it, I think it's was a, one of the features that sh should be developed like fast and maybe tested and then get back on that on this uh, if uh, if it's not uh, uh, not uh, enough. Yeah, because uh, right now we have a lot of, of issues, but. They are, we can we kind of uh, we are kind of scared of uh, putting it uh, to to the site. Uh, it's it's also because uh, local, the localization server module could be used by others, uh, but we have uh, we have a really stable really stable release um, done. So we could uh, we could we should uh, let the the master not not the master the Steven branch, uh, dev branch, always on localize, and once every every the the whole localized community is uh, happy with the new features, we should uh, release it for the whole all the other sites that are using the its module. Okay. So if there's no more questions, then our question for you is who uh, wants to get involved in making these things happen? Because these are nice plans that we explain, but we don't have enough people to make them happen, so they will remain plans in the issue queue unless we have people step up to help. Anybody interested in joining us? Not yet. <laughs> Neil, thank you. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. I, I've seen your arm. Perfect, okay. Yeah, uh, let's get started and we'll see, we'll get more people, I'm sure. So on Friday, uh, look for me if you want to to uh, sprint on that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be on the sprint. Room. Thank you. Thank you.